Hi guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to my Reason to Do App tutorial. Today we're going to be using Reason ML to build a to do application. All right, so before we get started with this to do application, just want to mention a few things. You can install Reason by using Yarn or NPM, or you can install it by installing the OCaml compiler and then the OPAM package manager. In both cases, it's a little bit more difficult than you'd expect to get things running on Windows because the support for Windows is not fully there yet. However, you can sort of bypass this by using the Linux subsystem for Windows, which is what I will be using in this particular tutorial. Also in this tutorial, I will be using the Reason Script Create React App Yarn Bootstrapper to bootstrap our application. Anyway, like always, I'll put all the information that you guys will need to get started with Reason into the description box if you are interested. All right, so to build our application, I run yarn create react app to do dash dash scripts dash version reason scripts. And this will build out an application called to do with various pieces of reason boilerplate. Once the application has been built, you can CD into the folder of the application and you can run yarn start. And this will start the development server for you. Our development server will be naturally on localhost 3000. And you can see here is the actual bootstrapped react reason application. Now let's take a look at the files and the directory. So we have a package.json file. This has all of the dependencies that we need. We have React, React DOM, and Reason Scripts. And then we have our dev dependencies. We also have this bsconfig.json file. In here, we actually explicitly define the BS dependencies that we're going to be using inside of our buckle script slash Reason application. Specifically, we need to say, okay, well, we want to use Reason React and BS Jest. Now in this tutorial, we won't be covering test driven development so we won't be actually using BS just but this is in there by default so then we have a bunch of folders here we have a public folder and this has our favicon our index.html and then a manifest.json file and then we've got a source folder where we have an app underscore test.re file, which is our test file for our reason application. Then we have app.re, which is the main component for this particular application. You can see that a lot of the syntax is very reminiscent of React JavaScript. We also have index.re, which I would kind of say is the entry point for this particular application. And we're rendering the element app with the message of welcome to React and Reason, and we're rendering it to the root ID. In our index.html, you can see here that our root ID is this div element. The application here, you'll see that we have this div element and it's surrounding the entire application that's being rendered. And that's basically how this application works. We're essentially going to leave index.re alone for the most part. All we're really going to do is remove this message part because we don't really need it. So let's jump into the app file and let's remove all of this boilerplate. And while we're at it, I'm going to also delete the app.css file. Now, if we wanted to add more CSS to our application, we could do so by adding it into our index.css file. And I'll go through how this works when we get to the end of our application. The first thing I like to do when building any application is define the data. So first we define a type called to do. To do is a record, we have an ID of int, we have a text of string, and we have a completed, which is a boolean. Each to do will have its own ID, and of course the actual to do itself will be the string part, and then it will also have a completed value, which will change based on whether or not a checkbox is checked or not. Now let's define the state of the application. The state of our application is just a list of our to do type. We can also create algebraic or union types in Reason, and we want to do this to define all of the actions that can be done in our application. This type has an add type, which has a string associated with it. It has a checked type, which has an int, and a delete type, which also has an int. Our add type is for when a user adds a to-do to our application. Our check type is for when a user checks the box of each to-do. And our delete type is for when a user wants to delete a to-do from the list. So like with Rust, we can alias functions by simply saying let and then creating a variable. In this case, I'm creating to string. So when I call the to string function anywhere else inside of our application, it will be a stand in for this line of code. 
Also, because all variables inside of reason are immutable, we need to use what is called a reference to create a mutable value. So I'm creating a value called to do ID and I'm setting the initial value at zero. So this reference is a mutable integer type. So our new to do function will take in text and then we'll take our to do ID reference and we'll increment it by one. We're using this colon equals to allow us to reassign the to do ID by adding it to one. And we need to use this caret here to basically signify to the compiler that it is a reference. So we're taking the reference, we're adding one to it, and then we're putting it back into to do ID. And then we're taking ID and we're assigning it to to do ID with the caret. And then we're saying completed equals false by default. And then we're taking text and we're assigning it to our text field. The next thing that we want to do is create a function that will be assigned to our action check. So this function takes in our ID, so the ID that we want to check, and then our list of to do's. And then we call list map. And the way that list map works is that we take a function and then we apply it to a list. So our function takes in a T where T.ID is equivalent to ID. And if this is true, take the completed part of our record and we invert the boolean. Otherwise, we just return t as it was. And of course, we need to pass in the list that we are editing. So we put in to do's here. So what we're essentially doing here, especially with this triple dot notation, which is called the spread operator, is rather than reassigning the completed part of our record, we're actually creating an entire new element and replacing the old element by referencing the old element. Now we're going to create a function that will correspond with our action delete. And so our delete function takes in ID and our list of to do's. And then we call list.filter instead of list.map. The way filter works is it takes in a function that returns a Boolean. What it will do is it will filter all of the elements where that Boolean is true and then keep them in the list. So in other words, say we have an element with a ID of three and we want to delete that ID of three. We pass in three and then every other element that doesn't have the ID of three will stay in our list. We now need to create a function called value from event. And this will allow us to take a keyboard event or a mouse event and get a string from it. Pipe E into react event re.form.target and then we pipe in the result of that into react dom re dot dom event to object and then we get the value out of this and this will give us back a string representation of the event okay so now we have the basic logic of our application all set up now let's create the component for our main component we're going to use what's called a reducer component so we say let component equal reason react dot reducer component app and then we want to create a function to actually build this component. To extend the component, we use the spread operator. It allows us to essentially take the base reducer component and then add functionality to it. We're taking a version of this component and then creating a new one based off of that version. First, we'll define the initial state with an anonymous function that takes in nothing and we'll just set to do's equal to an empty list. Then we want to set up what's called the reducer and the reducer allows us to define the logic for our actions and for updating our data. We're passing in the action and then we're passing in our list of to do's. And we want to switch on each of the actions that we have. For add, we want to call reason react dot update and we're updating our list of to do's by calling the new to do function with text in it and we're extending our current to do's list with this every single time we add an element we take the old list and we append a new element to this new list and again we're using the spread operator to sort of do that for check and for delete, we're going to be doing similar things. And for check, we just call our check function. And for delete, we just call our delete function. 
All right, so now let's create our renderer. And for those of you who have ever worked with React, you'll be very familiar with this because we're essentially writing JSX inside of our reason. For our render component, just for now, we're just going to create a div called app, and inside of it we'll have an h3, and we're going to call that toString function that we aliased before, and pass in a string called to do app, and then we're just going to close the h3 in the div. And our application will actually compile, so I left on the developer server, and you can see that we've got this title here that just says to do app. So this is all fine and dandy, but all of our logic doesn't work because we don't have an input box, we have no buttons, we don't have a list. With Reason, when you want to create multiple components, you typically create multiple files. In this case, however, I'm just going to define the multiple components in the same file. So I'll create a new module called Input, and inside of this module, we need to define the state, and we want to define the component that we want to extend. So our state will just be a type string. The only state for this input is just the text that's actually in the input box when the user is typing it in. And then our component will be a reducer component that will just be called input with a capital I. Now, like with our other component, we want to create a make function to extend the base reducer component. Rather than just taking in children like with this one, we're going to be taking in a on submit function and then our children. And then for our initial state, we want to give it an empty string. For our reducer, we pass in our new to do function and then we call reason react dot update with our new to do function. All right, so now let's create our render function. We pass in the state, which in this case is just our string, and we're just going to call this to do. And then we pass in our reducer, which we're just going to call reduce. And we want to then create an input element with a class name of input. The value that we want to bind it to is the to do value. The type for this input will be type text. And then we'll have a placeholder that will say, what do you want to do? Then to complete this input element, we want to add an on change listener. This will call reduce and it will have the event, which will be E, and it will call the value from event function that we created above, which gives us the string from the event. When we get a value from the event that is type enter, we want to submit the to do. And we do this with our on key down listener. Put in E, which is our event, and if react event re dot keyboard dot key E is equivalent to enter, then we want to call on submit with to do in it. And then we want to call reduce with an anonymous function that resets our state. And you'll notice here that we have this set of parentheses on the outside. That's because we want to execute this entire anonymous function as it's called inside of this line. All right, so that's all we really need to do for our input element. Now we can add it to our main element. We want to just put it underneath of our H3. So we create like an HTML element, and this needs to have an on submit. We call reduce, we put in our to do, and then we call our add type, which will then execute this piece of logic, which will allow us to update the list. And make sure to put an equal sign in here. That's actually a common mistake that I make all the time. Here's our application. We have our title, and then we have our input immediately after it. We can type something into our input, and if we hit the Enter key, you'll see that it just disappears. For our to-do list, I'm just going to create a new module called to-do item. And this particular module doesn't need to define a state because we're using a component called a stateless component. Our component doesn't actually have the data coupled to it. So we just define our component, and in this case, we're calling it to-do item with capital T and I. And for our make function, we want to pass in our to do on toggle and then a function called click delete. And then of course we're passing in our children. We want to extend the component and then we're going to render it and we pass in self. On toggle will be when somebody clicks on this element and then click delete will be a function that gets run when the element is clicked to be deleted. So first we'll create a div to wrap this component in and then we'll give it an on click with the event that executes the on toggle function. Then we'll have an input, which will be our checkbox. Then we also want to bind this input 
to our to-do completed, we need to convert the reason boolean into a JavaScript boolean. And we put this in for a property called checked. This means that the checkbox will be bound to the value of this boolean. Now to finish off this element, we need to create a label element, and this label element will have our todo.text converted into an element. So we call our toString function. And then we create another input, and this is type button. And then we want to give this a class name of button delete. We'll give it a value, as in like the actual text on the button will be an X. And then we'll have an on click listener. When it's clicked, it'll automatically run the click delete function. That's all we need to do for our to do item. Now let's come down here and actually implement it into our main application. To implement this, we're going to make use of our list map function. We're going to map our to-dos list onto the elements that we just created. Each of the to-dos inside of our to-dos list will have their own to-do item. For, so first we create a div to wrap around it with a class name of to-do list. And then we open a set of parentheses like this to create our anonymous function. And we put our list.map function inside of it. And then the function that we're mapping to our list will take a to-do item and then pass it into our to-do item element. We'll bind the key property to a string of int. So we're converting our integer to a string and we're taking that from our to-do ID. We are binding our to-do as the value for this item. And then for our on toggle, we're calling reduce and then we are calling the check function with to do ID in it. And then click delete will be reduced with the delete and the to do ID inside of that. The list that we're calling this function on is our to do's list. Now this will just output a list. It won't actually output an element. So we need to do a few more things to make it output some elements. So what we can do is we can take the list that we're getting and we can convert it into an array, and then we can convert the array back into elements. So like with the function that we have that's string to element, we have a function called array to element, and it takes an array from buckle script and then converts it into a bunch of elements. Let's take a look at our application. So now we can put in elements and you can see that now we have this list. If we click anywhere on the div, it will check the box. So I can click even all the way out here and it will check the box. And we can then click the X to delete a element. So this is a fully working to do application. We could style it up a bit by adding to our index.css. And the way this works is inside of our index.re file, we're using this bs.raw declaration to require the index.css file. So here I just put in a little bit of styling. Now we've got this sort of box shadow around it. Our items are a little bit better spaced out. The input is a little bit wider. We could also add a few more elements to this to-do application. For instance, we could make it so that we could filter through to-dos that have been marked as completed. Or we could add a small little footer that allows us to see how many to-dos are in the list. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know this was a fairly basic application and I know you guys are probably getting sick of looking at to-do applications. If you did enjoy this tutorial, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you disliked it, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good day.